Lumina Neo just got a fresh update. Version 1.24 brings new tools, performance tweaks, and a surprising new feature that may actually affect the way you start your edits. Or will it? Is it all good news? We're gonna find out in this video. Let's break it down feature by feature. I'll tell you the good, the bad, and I'm gonna give Skyland my recommendations of what I think they could have done better. This is actually a really nice broad update for Luminar Neo because not only do we have creative improvements, but we also have functional and workflow improvements as well. And that makes me very happy. Have you ever noticed that the more your Luminar Neo catalog grows, the more photos you put into it, the slower it seems to run. And the reason that that could be is that as the preview cache grows on your system, it's asking more and more of your system's resources, more and more memory is required. And so it can just become a bit sluggish when you're working in Neo. Well, thankfully we now have an option to clear the cache. Let me show you how we do it. So we're gonna come down, open up Luminar Neo, and we're gonna come up to the top left where we can access the menu. We come to file, we're gonna to come to preferences, and now you can see this top option in the preferences dialog box says clear cache. So by clicking that, I'm gonna free up 1.42 gigabytes. So let's click that. Are we sure we want to clear the catalog cache? Yes, we are. And that's just cleared up one and a half gigabytes from our system. Lovely. So if you're working with big image libraries, that's a really useful option. To be honest, I think it should have been available in Luminar Neo a lot sooner than this, but we have always had that option to go in manually into the folder that contains all of that information and delete it from our operating system. But it's a little bit of a pain doing it that way. So really nice that we can now do that just with the click of a button. That's the software approach for trying to make Luminar Neo run a bit faster. But of course we can do that through our hardware, our computer as well. If you wanna learn more about how I've set up my computer so that things like doing this aren't really an issue for me. I've got all information about that in my course, which you can get via the link in the description below. Of course, along with a little discount just for my YouTube following. Right, now we've got our catalog running a bit faster. How about a bit more control when we're exporting our photos? For a long time, people have asked for a DNG export option. Well, now we've got it. Let me show you. So let's suppose we open a photo unedited and we just do a quick development on that, a bit of accent AI, pop in a little bit of structure. Doesn't really matter what we've done. The point is we can come to export and in the format option right at the bottom here, you can see that we now have the ability to save as DNG, a digital negative file. And the options that we saw before in the JPEG for sharpening, color space, the quality, i.e. the compression that we're putting on that photo, the actual size that we're saving at, that all disappears. And that makes sense because DNG is supposedly a raw file. It's a negative version of your photo. And so really all we need to do is just make sure we're choosing DNG. We hit export and it's as easy as that. Now I am gonna be digging a little bit deeper into this because something doesn't quite add up for me because DNG, which is Adobe's proprietary format for saving negative files, when you save it, one of the things I love about doing that in Lightroom is that any of the changes that we've made inside Lightroom, where we've put those sliders, is hard baked into that file. So when you reopen it in another piece of software, all of that editing information comes along for the ride with that photo. So you've got a lovely, neat little package that says, this is my raw photo, plus the edits that I wanted to apply to it. So now it looks like this. But how this is set up at the moment in Luminar Neo isn't the same. We've got the raw file with that baked in look saved to the file, but the tools that we applied in Luminar Neo to get that look aren't actually still accessible via that DNG file. It's like a flattened file, almost like a TIFF. So to be honest at the moment, it kind of seems like we're creating a DNG without the benefits of DNG. Brutal, I know. Let's move on to something I'm feeling a little bit more positive about, and that is an improvement to the Atmosphere AI tool. As you know, Atmosphere AI adds atmospheric elements to our landscape photo, well not just our landscapes, but adds atmosphere to our photos such as fog, haze, things like that. And to do that, Luminar Neo creates a depth map. So it looks at the photo, the two dimensional scene and tries to create a three dimensional matrix out of that that it puts the fog into, no mean feat. And 
I give Skylum 10 out of 10 for the idea behind this Atmosphere AI tool. But up until now, I'll be honest, probably a 3 out of 10 for execution. Sometimes it works really well, but when the scene gets a little bit more complex with trees at differing positions, things like that, that's when it struggles a little bit. But the model that runs the tool has had an upgrade and so far the results are pretty good. Let me show you. All right, let's come down to a recent walk I did with my family and I was so hopeful for some moody, foggy shots. But as you can see, the fog, while it was there, it didn't really do anywhere near as much as what I was hoping for. But if we open up one of these photos here, this is back down at ground level and the fog had kind of dissipated. But let's suppose we wanted to introduce some. Let's see how the tool actually performs. So I'm gonna to go to the landscape section and atmosphere AI. We've got fog selected at the moment and we grab the amount slider and start bringing that up. And as you can see, if you know this tool, um, you can probably already tell that this is doing a better job already just by bringing the amount slider up. Like it's recognized that this tree right here is closer than this one. And so it's actually putting more fog behind that. And now if I grab the depth slider and start bringing that forward, the fog starts to come closer to what would be the camera. So we've got our before and after, and then we could change that to layered fog. We could change it to mist, or we could change it to haze. Let's give it a quick test on this photo that has my wife just walking in front of me here. So again, grab the amount slider and start bringing that up and let's see how the depth map performs already you can see that it's isolated my wife recognized that she is a shape in the foreground or at least closer to the camera and now if I bring that depth slider up you can see it's doing a much better job than it ever did before you know we can recede that off into the distance and Neo is definitely a lot smarter it appears in recognizing just how far items are from the camera just before we do move on, I'm just going to open up this photo here because this was one I was playing with. Uh, this is my cat in the garden. He would found himself a little toy to play with. But what I've done is actually add the fog on this. And so I was mentioning before how it's really good for landscape photography, but we can also apply that to any subject really. So this is the original photo and I just added in some mist and it starts to build in in the background and start to work its way towards the foreground. But because I am pretty picky with how things work and my images, one thing I wasn't super happy with was the edge of the cat in the background here. Because I shot this image with such a shallow depth of field, f2.8, the back of the cat was very soft indeed. And while the depth map is doing a great job of isolating him and knowing which bit is closer than the rest, I would have much preferred to see a softer transition of the fog between the cat's body and the background. See, here's the before and the after, and in the before you can definitely see how soft that transition is. Whereas the Atmosphere AI tool definitely makes a much harder transition around the back of him. So with these improvements to Atmosphere AI, I feel like we've certainly moved up from a three out of 10, much more towards probably an eight out of 10 at the moment. I'm really enjoying the results, but I still feel like it could be finessed just a little bit further. I really hope that Skylum continue this approach with future updates of revisiting pre-existing tools rather than keep introducing new stuff. Go back to those tools that are already there and just see if we can't get better performance out of them. So I really commend them for doing that with Atmosphere AI. As you know, I love these kind of creative tools and that's one of the reasons that I use Luminar Neo so heavily in my work. But the next thing that I also really love is to improve our workflow. So the addition of this new feature, which is Auto Adjust, which lives inside the Develop Raw tool, well, and develop as well, is designed to, with one click, make adjustments to our photo to improve it. It's a great idea, but does it live up to my expectations? Let's take a look. Right, let's move on from this vicious predator and take a look at another photo. We're gonna come up to develop raw and you'll notice something different. Here we have auto adjust. So if I click this, what Luminar is gonna do is try to calculate what it thinks should be the correct settings for this photo. So there you go, before and after it recognizes that the sky is overexposed and has brought down those details, hence the reason the highlight sliders come all the way down here. The exposure's down a little bit, shadows are up a little bit, but one thing you'll definitely notice is that the curves point has moved. The point that represents white was shifted over here. 
And I have explained before why that is beneficial rather than moving the actual white slider itself. You're better off to do that in curves, won't go over it again. So just trust me on that one. It's really nice to see that that's built into auto adjust. So here's our before, here's our after. That's a pretty straightforward example. So we're gonna try something a little bit more complex and see if it can solve it. So here's a little family photo of me and my daughter, of my nephew that my wife took and the camera was still in manual mode. My wife doesn't really know how to drive it. And so we have an overexposed photo. If I come to develop raw and click auto adjust, we're hoping that Luminar can make an adjustment for that. And it has, while it's not perfect, it's certainly better than it was. We've controlled the highlights again brought the exposure down, and again, it's shifted the curve over as well. If I toggle the before and after, we can see that yes, it is an improvement, but to be honest, if I was moving these sliders around manually myself and working with the curve, I think I could do a much better job. Now take note of something here, if I scroll up, you'll see that the highlights are dropped down really aggressively again, which is the same as what it did in the previous photo as well. So if we go to a photo of my other cat here, develop raw, hit auto adjust, I just wanna see what it does here. Okay, thankfully for this one, it hasn't gone as heavy handed with the reduction of highlights. However, I have noticed that that is a trend that more often than not, the auto adjust is pushing that highlight slider very aggressively down. But the issue that I have with this auto adjust setting is that it's only moving exposure, highlight shadows, and a slight adjustment to the curve. It's not addressing things like incorrect color balance. So in this photo, we can see in the cat's fur, that there's a lot of blue in the tail. Obviously that's the sky lighting the tail. And so really the color temperature does need to be warmed up a bit to look more natural, something like that. Now I wish that the auto adjust button would have done that for me. So I think the addition of this button is potentially really useful, but at the moment I'm not very happy with the results it's giving me. I feel like I'm in a much better place to actually make these adjustments manually myself. But having said that, just like the improvements that we've seen with Atmosphere AI, I'm hopeful that we will see better results coming out of this tool very soon. I should also say that I am using the beta version of the program at the moment. However, I don't really see the core programming that controls this changing between now and the full release. Now with this update, Skyland have done one of those things where they've made one part of their update exclusive, and it's this one. So if you are on the year subscription, you'll have access to this auto adjust feature. If you have bought Luminar Neo outright, you're not gonna see this particular button appear. And to be honest, it's not really that big a deal that it's not there at the moment. And by the time they improve it to a point that I think functionally it's a good thing, a good button to press, who knows, maybe it will be included with Luminar Neo as standard. It would be remiss of me not to mention, but Skylum have launched some little thing where you can upgrade the standalone version to the version that gets this for $30. You can get it via the link in the description below, but honestly, I don't know if it's worth it, but if you're someone who likes to have the shiny new version of everything, then obviously go ahead and get yourself that. I hope this uh, overview of the update has been useful to you. As always, give me a thumbs up if you appreciate the video and let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you in another video. Maybe check out that one right there. Bye-bye for now.